Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com. Now, YouTube is tough. I know it's the Wild West here online and that everyone's a cowboy. But I have to tell you, I don't think I've ever seen YouTube, the commentators on a boxing video, be tougher on a fighter than they are on Tony Thompson this morning. I made a video yesterday where I said that I was taking Thompson over David Price, but I would hedge the play with Price by KO. Understand Price is the favorite in that fight. Price is the unbeaten fighter. But I thought it was obvious to all of us that Tony Thompson is a credible and very serious heavyweight. Right? I thought it was obvious that Tony Thompson is a world-class fighter. In fact, Thompson has more knockouts than David Price has fights. David Price only has 15 professional fights as I make this video. And let's face it, David Price hasn't been fighting the Derek Chisoras, the Tyson Furies, the Deontay Wilders, uh, of the world, the Brian Jennings is uh, of the world, right? His resume is littered with guys like Matt Skelton, Tom Dallas, Audley Harrison, right? These aren't John McDermott. These aren't big names currently on the heavyweight scene. Now, what's happened since then is I've gotten an avalanche of comments on that video. I encourage everyone to read the comments because really... The video experience isn't so much about the video as it is the dialogue and boxing community. And one viewer flatly asked me, Dwyer, have you gone mad? I've had other viewers say, Tony Thompson is a bum. Why are you talking about him? Right? The comments, again, I encourage everyone to look at the comments on that video. It's not one person. It's multiple people. I've even been accused of racism. Someone wrote that I always take the black fighter over the white fighter, right? That's the only way they could see me picking Tony Thompson as having even a chance against David Price, right? There's There could be no possible other explanation. Well, let me offer one in defense of Tony Thompson. And let me point out, I'm just another person here online on YouTube. I have no allegiance to any fighter's camp or any fighter in particular. Really, what I'm rooting for in every fight, apart from whoever I've bet on in that fight, what I'm actually rooting for is just a great fight, right? I want to see the sport, boxing, thrive. But let me make the other argument for Tony Thompson, because I'm not sure if people understand how good this guy is. Understand that Tony Thompson, in the last 12 years, 12 years, has only lost to one man. And that man is the heavyweight champion, Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Tony's only lost to one man. And that man rules the roost in the division with his brother, Vitaly Klitschko. Let me apologize to Alexander Povetkin, but in my opinion, you need to beat a Klitschko to be a heavyweight champion these days, right? Let's also look more closely at Vladimir Klitschko. In Vladimir's recent reign, right, his recent reign, I'm not talking about earlier when he gets KO'd by Corey Sanders and stuff like that. I'm talking about his current reign. Of all the guys who have fought Vladimir Klitschko, who has given him the best fight during that period of time? I would argue it's Tony Thompson. Right? The first Thompson-Klitschko fight, quite frankly, you know, Tony Thompson puts up the best opposition, in my opinion, that Vladimir Klitschko has faced in his recent reign. Okay, I understand that earlier in his career, 
There were other contentious fights, but in his recent reign, Klitschko has rarely been tested. There's rarely been a fight where a guy has actually competed with Klitschko on the CompuBox numbers, right? That fight, forget the judges scoring, right? The judges seem to have been starstruck. But if you take out a video of that fight and if you look at the CompuBox numbers, that's all I ask. Don't believe my hot air here. Just Google the CompuBox numbers for the first fight. Tony Thompson gave the current heavyweight champ the best fight he's had in his recent reign, right? And so, let me also point out, I've had comments about, um, oh, well, you know, Tony has to survive the early rounds against David Price. Understand, Tony Thompson's a knockout puncher. Did you know between the two Klitschko fights, right, between the two of them, Tony Thompson has a string of something like five knockouts, right? Thompson usually dispatches a guy by the end of the fifth round, right? Understand in those knockouts, in that string, only one guy makes it to the ninth round, and that's Chaz Witherspoon, who's a very slick fighter. I understand Seth Mitchell beat Chaz Witherspoon, right? That's what people remember. <laughs> okay, great, right? The point, though, is Chaz Witherspoon is a very slick fighter. Let's not look at these seasoned fighters and only judge them by their worst day as a pro against one of the very best fighters in their division. Let me go one step further. And by the way, I was not hinting that Seth Mitchell is one of the best fighters in the division. I was saying Vladimir Klitschko, okay? Judge Tony Thompson on his entire body of work, which includes wins over people like Lewin Krasnicki, right? Um, Mo Harris. Let me point out, these are much tougher opponents. I mean, much tougher opponents than who David Price has fought. You know, uh, let me also say, too, I mentioned in the video that, in my opinion, Tony Thompson might be the best current American heavyweight. Even that got some resistance. Well, again, Thompson's only lost once in the last 12 years. Let's look at the American heavyweight scene. You have some promising prospects. Deontay Wilder, who I mentioned earlier, right? You have to ask yourself, who has Wilder fought? Brian Jennings, another up-and-comer. Again, these guys haven't fought anything close to the level of talent that Tony Thompson has fought. You understand that. The other American heavyweights, Jonathan Banks, he's had his ups and downs. Seth Mitchell just got exposed by Jonathan Banks, right? Chris Ariola, Ariola's really in the comeback stage of his career. After coming up short against Tomas Ademek and, of course, getting dismantled by Vitaly Klitschko to the point where his corner pulled the plug on that fight, right? And so, in the U.S. right now, at heavyweight, the water is not that deep. And here you have a heavyweight who literally has beaten Owen Beck, has beaten a bunch of guys who might right now be on the downside of their careers, but when he fought them, these guys were actually dangerous opponents. So all I can say is this. In the Tony Thompson debate, and I didn't realize, you know, while I understood that I was predicting an upset, I didn't realize that Tony Thompson was so lightly regarded. Put it this way. I would take Tony Thompson right now over Tomas Ademek, right? In this Tony Thompson debate, other than the Klitschko fights, right? The first one goes several rounds. The second one, Thompson comes out wins the first round. Then Klitschko 
drops his guard, opens up a bit, and in one of Klitschko's best performances, beats Thompson down. Okay, great. Take out those two fights. What is it about the rest of Tony Thompson's career that has you thinking he's a bum? Okay, what, what are the gift decisions Tony Thompson has received? What are the fights you've watched where Tony Thompson has been exposed, right? Has hit the canvas, was lucky to win the fight, was struggling, uh, got help from the referee, got help from, you know, his corner. What are the fights where Tony Thompson, quite frankly, has looked questionable? I, I have to be blunt with you. I can't think of any. The Thompson I've watched was ducked for years by elite competition when he hopped in the ring with guys like Chaz Witherspoon and Owen Beck, Mo Harris. He destroyed those guys, won those fights by knockout. Now, let me just say this, too. I didn't name names, but during the video uh, on the Price-Thompson fight, I mentioned that David Price in some fights, has had his back up against the ropes and hasn't looked good, right? The Matt Skelton fight. What I want you to do, it's a short fight. David Price got the KO. KOs, as I say, cause amnesia, not just with the guy knocked out, but also with fans, right? If it's a dazzling KO, we get so blinded by the KO that we just lose sight of some flaws before the KO, right? Isn't David Price getting backed up to the corner by Matt Skelton in that fight? Doesn't Skelton, in fact, have some success smothering David Price? As we think of David Price, if I were to ask you to name me, other than punching power, right? Which he has, and hand speed. Other than punching power and hand speed, and yeah, those are big things. But you tell me, what else does Price do that well? Right? Price is a talent. He's one of the big names. I myself have pub Price here multiple times online as an up-and-comer. Right? Can anyone here tell me that Price is that gifted defensively? Can anyone tell me that Price is a master at maintaining spacing in the ring, given that he was pushed back up against the ropes by Matt Skelton multiple times in a short two-round fight? Right? Can anyone here tell me, even knowing that Audley Harrison's a southpaw, that they know with confidence that David Price can handle southpaws, given that Audley Harrison in that short fight under a round never really got the opportunity to exploit his southpaw stance, right? And so, you know, all I'm saying is you have a seasoned vet who's only lost to Vladimir Klitschko in the last 12 years, right, who gave Vladimir his best fight during his recent reign. And he's going up against a guy with fewer fights than he has KOs who, quite frankly, has had some questionable moments in some fights, right? I don't know why I'm the one who's crazy. If the fight looks like that big of a mismatch to you, am I crazy or is the world crazy right now, right? Is the public opinion right now a bit unhinged from what these fighters have actually done in their careers? Let me also point out too, and I've mentioned this before, you know, David Price is something like 29 years old, right? You really have to ask yourself. You know, Demetrius Andrade was getting a lot of heat before he fought Freddie Hernandez yesterday um, at 154 over having uh, been a decorated amateur and having started his career slowly and then having some of the guys he came up through the amateurs with move on faster than him to world title opportunities. People wanted to know why it took Andre so many years 
to get to the world stage, to get to fight Freddie Hernandez. Folks, Andre's 24 years old. David Price is 29 years old. What's taken David Price so long to get to this level of competition, right? His last fight was against Matt Skelton. No knock on Matt Skelton, but that's not exactly a David Hay level name, right? That's not exactly an Alexander Povetkin level name, right? Tony Thompson has already fought Vladimir Klitschko twice, right? David Price hasn't even called out Vladimir Klitschko yet. When I see a 29-year-old and he's just now in the deep end of the pool, that doesn't give me a lot of comfort. That's not as comforting as knowing that a guy has actually been in the ring with Lewin Krasnicki, Chaz Witherspoon, Owen Beck, Mo Harris, Vladimir Klitschko, the first fight, and has actually held his own. So let me challenge YouTube Nation, okay? Take away the Klitschko fights. Tell me why Tony Thompson is a bum. Tell me why I'm really sticking my neck out that far to say that I like Tony Thompson in the fight. Hedged against Price by Kale. Keep in mind, we don't even know how Price is going to look in the later rounds of a spirited fight. Right? Some of these fighters are front runners. You remember Mike Tyson looked dominant early in fights. Suddenly, Evander Holifield takes him into the deep part of the pool. Their first fight in the later rounds, and I'll tell you what, Mike had problems swimming. Right? Just because a guy looks dazzling in knocking out Audley Harrison early, Tom Dallas early, Matt Skelton early, doesn't mean that against better competition, he's going to look that good later in the fight. So let me hear from you. Why is Tony Thompson a bum? Right? I'm not, you know, all I can say is I just try to call it as I see it. If I thought David Price was an odds-on favorite to become the second man in the last 12 years to beat Tony Thompson, I wouldn't have a problem saying it. But what I see is a seasoned vet with a better resume who's fighting a difficult southpaw style against a guy who I'm not sure of right now, who might not be ready to deal with a southpaw with a punch and volume, unlike Audley Harrison. Anyway, let me hear from you. I thought the comments really warranted a response. Um, let me also say, too, to the gentleman who asked me uh, to, you know, explain why I believe Tony Thompson is the best American heavyweight. You know, Deontay Wilder, Brian Jennings, they were a lot like David Price. They look great. Right. If I recognize the guys they were fighting, maybe I'd give the fights more credence. But when prospects are fighting unknowns, of course, they're going to look great. Right. I'm going to give the proven tested vets priority in my own personal rankings before I speculate on a guy who, quite frankly, looks great against my next door neighbor, but might not look great when he's in against a top five ranked guy in his division. Okay, anyway, let me hear from you. Um, I understand boxing's a young man's game. Let me also point out too, that I've said in an earlier video, before the Tony Thompson video, I've said in an earlier video, that I believe that David Price loses to Tyson Fury. Right? I have fewer questions about Fury, but of course, unlike Price, Fury's fought Derek Chisora and the kingpin, Kevin Johnson. So I have more of an understanding of Fury against world-class level competition. 
David Price has not. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com and dwyervip.com on Roku, Dwyer Sports Betting, and Dwyer Boxing, private channels. Thanks for watching.